A firefighters union is pushing for an independent inquiry into their claims firefighters were taken away from the Port Hills fire at a crucial time for about 90 minutes very early on. The call by Derek Best comes as evacuated homeowners voice their frustration about mixed and confusing messages from civil defence, including over whether or not their houses have been burnt down. We heard from a woman who was told her family home had gone. It hadn't. Two cordons were today lifted so residents could return to their homes, but in harder hit places like Worsley's Road, homeowners were only allowed back briefly escorted by police or fire officers. Some are angry at civil defence's handling of the emergency. Sharon Brick Kelly was with two residents as they returned home. There is literally nothing left. Like it is burnt three storeys to the ground. Simon Grace surveys the ruins of his family home on Worsley's Road as firefighters hose down the smouldering remains. There's just a couple of bricks left and that's it, like nothing. So, this is your family home? Yeah, we've been here 20 years, so um, there's a lot of stuff here and I had a lot of good times here and it's a shame just to see it all turn to, uh, turn to dust. All that's been saved are a box of photos and a car. The rest of his family's belongings are gone. Like many others who evacuated, he is angry with civil defence and its poor communication. Yeah, up until now it's been so frustrating. We've been given absolutely no information about what's going on. And even just today to get here has been a massive fight. Mr Grace has spent hours with other residents at the cordon at the bottom of Worsley's Road waiting to be allowed home. When media were allowed past the cordon for the first time this afternoon, they argued homeowners should go too. Driving this. I can find out for you. Um, just because we're the residents. I know that we were yeah. just talking about. Yeah, yeah. They're sending the media up, but you guys have to stay here. So. Well, well I mean, I surely first people to see the home should be the ones who have lost yeah, it. Yeah, I realise that. Yeah. So I'll go and talk to the guys in the command unit and yeah. we'll find out what's going on. Thank you. All right. Thank you. A few minutes later, Wade Ruby was at his home as helicopters flew in to scoop up water from his neighbour's pool. There's been fire on all sides of it. We've lost the garage, but the house is fine. It doesn't look like the heat's touched it. They've kept in a door to check on us. Um, they've boarded it up again though. I can't see smoke damage in there. The chicken coop's gone, but the chickens are all still here. We've just been incredibly lucky. Um, it's, it's done a ring around our house. I think the neighbor's pool's probably saved us having that water so nearby. Um, just walking around it, it's unbelievable. Other homeowners still waiting to get into their homes told RNZ News that civil defence should have done a better job of communicating with them. It's horrible. My husband rang civil defence yesterday trying to get information and they said we can't give you any information. Um, prepare for smoke damage, that's all we can tell you. Well it's a bit disappointing we've got to get off in the, through the news media that we can go back or whether we can't. It would be much easier if we could go to civil defence and find from there that we can go. The Canterbury civil defence controller John Mackey says they could have done better but it is a complex operation. We have never seen anything of the likes of a 2,000 hectare fire within an urban and, and rural and urban environment. So very complex, different parts of legislation, so communications. We have regular meetings with the multiple agencies and try and get a coordinated message that we all agree to. Misty rain has been falling in Christchurch today, but John Mackey says the fire danger is not over yet. I o tautahi mo te hotaka o te ahiahi ko Sharon Brett Kelly ahau.